Intel's new Panther Lake line is almost here, and at CES this year, I was able to go hands-on with a lot of these new chips, and I'm really impressed with the performance. But what we saw so far were basically in laptops and mini PCs. What I'm super excited about are upcoming handhelds, and Intel did give us a little announcement. So today, we're excited to share with you that we'll be launching an entire handheld gaming platform with Panther Lake. And we'll have more news to share on that from our hardware and software partners, partners later this year. So yeah, it does look like Intel will be going all in when it comes to handheld gaming PCs powered by Panther Lake. And we're not exactly sure what this means just yet, but I do believe we will be seeing custom Panther Lake chips specifically designed for handheld gaming PCs. Maybe with lower core counts on the CPU to keep the clocks up on the GPU. Because right now, as it sits, one of the top of the line Panther Lake chips that's going to be releasing in the next two weeks or so, and I'll have a bunch of videos on it, so keep an eye on the channel, is the Intel Core Ultra X9388H. 16 cores, 16 threads, and their new B390i GPU with 12 XE3 cores and 12 enhanced ray tracing units. It also has 96 XMX engines. And this iGPU here, from my testing so far, even at lower wattages, has been really awesome. I mean, this is a big step forward, even from Lunar Lake. And if you remember, Lunar Lake wasn't a slouch. I mean, it was a great performer. But I think what kind of held that back uh, altogether was core count. Eight cores, eight threads, obviously much lower power draw with something like that. But on the other hand, throwing 16 cores and 16 threads in a handheld, I think doesn't make sense. So I'm hoping to see a custom chip for handhelds with like 12 cores, 12 threads, and that B390i GPU, or maybe even a custom iGPU specifically designed for handhelds. But we won't know exactly what they're doing until we get the official announcement, but until then, we can get a good idea of the performance we might see out of a handheld with Panther Lake in these laptops. And again, at CES, I did have a lot of hands-on time with a bunch of different manufacturers' laptops and even mini PCs. Most of the devices I was able to go hands-on with had that Intel Core Ultra X9388H with the B390i GPU. It feels great for everyday tasks. You wanna throw some AI workloads at it, it's gonna handle it pretty well. Obviously, it's not gonna beat something like an RTX 5090, but these things aren't drawing 650 watts either. So for light AI tasks, yeah, this thing trucks right through. But the main thing I was interested in by going to CES and checking out Panther Lake this year was gaming on this iGPU. It's a lot of the stuff that we do over here on the channel. And yeah, we can go ahead and get a dedicated GPU, build a nice gaming PC. But I love seeing what these integrated graphics can do. And I think Intel has really done an amazing job with Panther Lake and that B390. And we're also going to be getting new technologies from Intel, like XESS Multi-Frame Gen. Uh, I was able to test out Battlefield 6, really good performance. We're sitting at high settings with Frame Gen on, but the laptop we were using was running at about 65 watts. I think uh, total TDP there was like 80, but while running the game, around 64 watts. Dead by Daylight 2 also performed really well. I spent a few minutes playing this game, actually about 15 minutes. And uh, I was pretty impressed by what I saw. I mean, even going outdoors during battle, we're still over 100 FPS with the B390. But again, this laptop was sitting at a higher wattage than we're going to be running in a handheld gaming PC. Spider-Man 2, 1200p XESS set to quality with no frame generation. We're over 60 FPS here, and this is definitely a harder one to run on a mobile chip, especially in a scene like this. There's just a lot going on. Seeing this over that 60 mark is really impressive with no frame gen on. Another one I was able to test out was Doom the Dark Ages. This is at high settings, 1200p with XESS set to balance, and we're over 90 FPS on average with it. So I do love the performance we're seeing here. Of course, we do have a little bit of scaling going on with XESS set to balance, but again, it's a mobile chip. It's an iGPU giving us this kind of performance. But I was really interested to see what kind of performance we could see out of this chipset at a lower TDP, something more suitable for a handheld. And again, Intel will be creating custom Panther Lake chips for a handheld. So there's a chance we could see a little better performance over there, given that maybe the core count isn't as high, iGPU is set up a bit different. So at CES, I was able to get a little bit of footage of Cyberpunk 2077 running at different TDPs. And here it is running at a 19 watt TDP. 
and you will see that jump up to 20 watts because uh, Panther Lake is kind of set up like Lunar Lake where our power limit one needs to be one watt lower than power limit two. So power limit one is 19 watts, power limit two is at 20 watts. So you'll see it fluctuate between 19 to 20. But right now we're at 1200p medium settings with XESS set to quality. We can get over 60 if we want to drop this down to low or even take XESS to balanced. But it looks so good like this at medium settings, I wouldn't mind playing it like this, even on a bigger display. Not quite locked at 60 just yet, but to tell you the truth, if I was on a variable refresh rate display and I didn't have that frame counter on, I couldn't tell the difference. It's super smooth like this for sure. Now, taking it up to a 35 watt TDP, but instead of running at medium, we're at ultra settings, still at 1200p with XESS set to quality. I'm seeing an average of 78 FPS. So 35 watts, still a bit high for a handheld, but it's definitely doable, especially if we've got a larger battery, like an 80 to a 90 watt hour battery. But one thing to keep in mind here is this is not a custom chip for handheld gaming devices. I do believe if they were to go with like a 12 core, 12 thread part with the same iGPU, we could take this TDP down and still see that kind of performance. Because right now, we've got extra cores here that need that wattage that might not be necessary to play a game like this. So of course, seeing a custom chip would be really nice. So of course, seeing a custom chip would be really nice. But one of my favorite technologies from Intel in their graphics division is their XESS frame gen. In my opinion, it's some of the best frame gen on the market right now, at least for iGPUs. And this is an XESS multi-frame gen. This is just basically 2x frame gen. We're at high with that turned on at a 19 watt TDP. And I'll tell you, this was filmed a couple weeks ago. Uh, Intel with their ARC drivers release new drivers all the time to increase performance. So I do think by the time I get some testing out of the way on the X9 in a laptop for the channel, we'll see better performance even at this kind of wattage. So needless to say, I'm super excited about Panther Lake, and as soon as the embargo goes up, I will have a bunch of videos on the channel. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that I want to show you with this new chipset. Once the full embargo is lifted, I will have a bunch of videos posted on the channel, so keep an eye out. I've got a lot of really cool stuff that I want to show you with this new chipset here. But until then, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If Panther Lake really does perform as well as, you know, we're seeing so far in handheld gaming PCs, would that be something you're interested in? Are you going to wait it out? Keep what you have? Let us know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.